You better be careful, you're going fast. Today I'm going to do a battery upgrade for the Jetson Bolt Pro. And contrary to the looks, this is not a length versus girth debate. This battery has the bigger capacity, stronger 48 volts, faster discharge current, and yes, it really pumps if you can handle it. This is a 48 volt, 8 amp hour battery, and the primary purpose of this upgrade is to increase capacity and speed of your Jetson Bolt Pro, and yes, both at the same time. Perform at your own risk. Your warranty is likely null and void after this point. In theory, this should fit like this and theories are always accurate. Bruh. I'm hoping that it all works out, but it's just one of these things that's slightly out of my control, like being a father. Ooh. To remove the rubber cap, I have this small little flathead screwdriver. It will just pry it straight out. The screws are next. I need to unplug the power, but to get to it, I need to remove the zip tie. See if you could unplug this just so that you're working safely. There we go. I'm going to try to fish this one through. I like how it's zip tied right now. I don't want to make a further mess. It's not going to work. I'm going to have to cut it. Somehow this is going to sit in here somewhere. We'll make it work. With my previous upgrade, I had the charger sticking outside of the bike, which is probably not the best way of doing it. And then I had a longer cable to reach to the power. This time I am going to flip it like how OEM is done. I will need an extension cable for the charger. It's going to be something like this and plug directly onto the original charging port. The premise is quite easy. This is OEM. This is how it hooks up and this one to the controller. So I've got the controller part done. The only other missing part is changing this to fit into this. And I did that by buying this connector right here. So that changes this head right here. And I got these JST SM2 pin 2.5 millimeter connectors. They come like this. And it's actually two pieces. Take it apart. And now I've got this piece that hooks onto here. Here are the crimp heads. I'm going to grab two of them. Based on visual inspection, these crimp heads, they're going to go in like this. This hook is going to latch right here and stay into place. So the goal is to match this right here. And we're just going to crimp away. And you don't need a much working space right here. Just a tiny bit. Okay, and just break it off by hand. I have no other way of doing this. I'm just gonna crimp this thing by pure force. And again, the second side. Yes, it's in there tight. See, I wrapped this head around. The JST one, you're gonna cave it. It caves in the crimp. However, I don't have a proper JST crimp, so I'm just using these pliers. Yeah, it takes a bit of force, but there you go. Time to remove the battery. Let's see how this one fits in there. So right off the bat, it's not going to fit because of this controller. Let's remove that. Okay, so what I see is that this thing right here might prevent from installing and this definitely prevents from installing. So I'm going to remove this one first and I'm just going to remove uh, a little bit of this as well. I'm going to do a dry fit. The reason why I'm doing this dry fit is I want to know exactly where the battery is going to sit so that when I screw these in, you can see that there's a, a little bit of a gap right here. You see when I screw this in, there's a little bit of gap so I'm going to have to shim something underneath 
so it, it, it just sits right in there and it's not gonna flop around you know what I'm gonna screw this down because this is going to stay in here I don't know where the space is yet however I will figure that out after I screw this in place so it's not so squirrely anymore tucking all of this in okay so I'm gonna plug this in and we've got power and the reason I'm plugging it in so early is just so I can get an idea of how I'm going to fit this all in. Alright, so what I found is that there is a, a bit of a gap up here, uh, which I like. So I'm going to fish the cables down here. And up here, I don't want this thing right here to pinch or any wires coming this way to pinch. So in that scenario... I am going to put a spacer right here. Whatever cable management I can get, I will take. Up here, it should be okay because it's going to be pressed up against that corner right there. It can't move forward anymore. But here, it can't really move backwards. I just don't want it to move downwards. And this thing is going to be jammed up against the case. It has nowhere to run. Before we put back everything together, plug in the original power charging cable. This is a tight fit. What I'm seeing here is I believe this charging cable is sort of in the way. The charging port that is and I am not gonna sacrifice that okay so what happened is that this cable <laughs> it got a little bit loose so I'm gonna move this spin it downwards just so it's, it's cleaner like that just a bit of cable rerouting so I'm, what I'm doing is I'm slowly but surely moving these cables underneath the battery just so I can make space. I mean, it's, it's above the battery, but it's underneath uh, the clamp that holds the battery into place. See, that gives me a lot more space now. Okay, now I think everything will close a lot better this time around. All right, this is not necessarily a problem, but I think it would be a little bit easier if I simply remove this cover because I see it's it's getting jammed up in here. Okay, yeah, that's cleaner. But that tiny little modification, just a tiny bit. Yeah, so this bracket, just one side of the controller board, it doesn't really have anywhere to go, so it's not going to be a problem. All right, the moment of truth. Here we go. Charging, 54.6 volts. So why did you want to get the upgrade? Um, I wanted the upgrade because I was deciding between uh, getting a bigger e-bike um, or staying with my Jetson and the battery sag that was mentioned in a previous video <laughs> yeah, yeah. actually really spoke to me um, and I, th I thought that getting an upgraded battery was right in the middle. Um, okay. Uh, give me gives me more range less battery sag but I don't have to pay for a completely new e-bike. Well you know that this thing is going to go faster and you might still get the battery sag because yeah. I guess you'll probably throttle it hard. I don't know. Give it a try. We'll give it a try and yeah. anything it lasts longer. So.
Wow. Look at that. Baba! You better be careful. You're going fast. So yeah, I can fix your brakes all the way. No, it is what it is. It's significant. I can feel the difference. Oh, you can? Yeah. So this um, is already speed hacked and now it's running 48 volts yeah. with that <laughs> eight amp hour battery. I, I used to be able to um, pedal as fast as I can go, hit the throttle and feel nothing. Okay. But now I can pedal as fast as I can go when I hit the throttle, there's more. It just, oh yeah, there's more. all right. So yeah, there's definitely a difference. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the upgrade and yeah. Thank you. Yeah, all right. I'll be sure to do a pin post on the speed increase of a 48 volt battery. So to recap just a little bit, moving forward, I am going to start using these thinner wires for charging rather than bringing a massive cable to route the power. Thinner cables cost less and occupy less space. Overall, it's a more efficient setup and with regards to a 48 volt battery, it will fit in the box. It will work with the stock controller and stock motor. There is a bit of work to do and it's probably worth it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you thoroughly enjoyed the video. Be sure to smash the like button furiously, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you on the next one. Take care.